What's up, YouTube? For today's video, we're in full gen based evolution team. So, pretty much, this team is all about Pokemon like Combi evolving into Vespin, so it can only be a female. And then we've got Snorunt going into Frostlass because it can only be a female as well to get that evolution. It's a pretty interesting team, and I'm actually kind of surprised I haven't done it. If you guys want to check me out on Twitch, make sure you do. That's where I do all my streams and stuff. And our link is in the description of the video. And a big shout out to everyone that's already come and followed me over there. Tonight, I've got a triple battle special for you so i'm going to uh, narrate three battles in uh, one video um i was actually going to put this one up yesterday but i felt a little bit tired so here we are today and i thought i'd spoil you people with our uh, three battles okay uh this was a battle on my twitch chat this one was against mr mysterious and we have a berserker lead not the greatest lead in the world for my frost as first but uh you know what can you do here we got a physical frost as with triple axle poltergeist Body Slam, and we've also got Destiny Bomb. So I was thinking, okay, I'm probably not going to be able to take out a Berserker with any of the moves that I got, especially a Physical Frost Slash. So I went for the Destiny Bomb and hope for the best run. So we've got Berserker going for the Payback, and it lives. Oh, so my Destiny Bomb is going to fail. So what am I going to do, right, is I've got to swap out the Frost Slash and swap into my Gardevoir. So I was like, okay, they'll probably go for another Payback just to take me out here, and, you know, I'll be able to swap in the Gardevoir. So Gardevoir's got Trace. It's going to get a Steely Spirit, Hacker Exposed, and uh, now it's going to go for Regara Ball and it's going to take my Gardevoir out in one shot. That was a really, really rough start there. Now, my team was sort of weak against this type as well, as you can see, right? So I'm going to swap in my Glalie here. This was a Attract, <laughs> Sheer Cold Block and Rest Glalie. So go for the Sheer Cold here and we got the payback again from the Berserker. Now, I, I was going to go into my, uh, my Frost Sass again, but I thought if I go into Frost Sass and go for Destiny Bond, it's going to be too obvious. I'll probably just swap or set up, right? So this is a uh, interesting set here. Now, Moody actually got nerfed in this gen, so you can't get those, like, evasion, like, anymore, which is, I, I, I guess, it, it's still reasonably good, right? But it's nowhere near as good, because you can't get those evasion and accuracy modifiers, which has, uh, you know, made it really, really broken, right? So I got the uh, Attract up on my uh, Glalie here, and I've got the block to block the opponents in, and then go for Attract, and then I can spam Sheer Cold. My item is Leopard Berry as well. Max health and max speed. Uh, jolly nature, too. So Glalie's got to get another Moody there. Hoping I can get, like, a Sheer Cold just to take this out. This is a fully, fully troll set, right? Sort of like, I actually got a fair bit of, I got a fair bit of heartache out of the set and I got a little bit of success. So it was one of those really like luck based sets, right? So here I'm going to go for a rest. I thought I could have a Chesto Berry on this, but then I was thinking, right, if I go to a Chesto Berry, re a Resto Chesto, right, if I run out of sheer colds, um, that'll be it for the set. I won't be able to use it anymore. So that's why I opted to go for Leopard Berry uh, on this one too. Leopard Berry restores the PP of, uh, you know, the first, um, uh, move the title to the PP used up. So we got the uh, Berserker here. It's going to be uh, infatuated and it's going to get immobilized, which is really, really good. Now, I've got to actually sleep here for two turns without doing anything. That's why I thought a track would work really well because you get that nice 50% chance. I was actually thinking about doing some other things, like along with the set to maybe Swagger, but I kind of need a block right. So I can't do anything this turn. We got the Berserker swapping out, and we got the Corviknight swapping in. Uh, my opponent was also running a theme team too. I wonder if you can guess what it is. So getting another Moody boost there, and Moody's uh, going to drop my attack, which is fine, because I don't use attack on this set. Actually, I don't use any offense on this set at all, which is really, really nice. So now I'm going to be asleep again. Once again, I'm running a Speedy Glady. When I say Speedy Glady, it's not that fast anyway. We've got a special call run, and it's going to be hitting me with a flash cannon. It's like, oh, this is going to be close where I live the next one, and then I get a special fence drop. I'm like, man, it's it's not going to be close at all. I'm definitely going to be going down. So Moody's going to activate, and it's going to drop my special fence there too. So that's like a double special fence drop. So my only hope here is to get that sheer cult to wake up, get that sheer cult off, and hit the core night. and sheer cult is going to miss. And now I'm going to go down for a flash cannon. Man, what a horrible, horrible start to a battle and a little bit unlucky in the uh, sections there not some i mean not so much with the gladly more the start with the frost sass and then losing my guard of all right and not having lots to swap into these pokemon okay so i thought right they're probably going to expect me to go for a destiny bond so let's go for a destiny bond right because they'll be expecting that play and maybe they'll think that i'll go for another move so we got the <laughs> this is actually pretty funny so we got the uh, scavalier coming in here and they swap their corvin on that so like, okay the only way for me to use Destiny Bond and get it 100% would be to go for a triple axle, right? 
and to get a flinch. Now, my item was King's Rock, and I was like, let's get a flinch here. I can go for it, right? So I'm going to go for the triple axle here, and it's going to hit three times. It does pretty small damage, and guess what, guys? I get the flinch there, which is hype. So now I can opt to go for a Destiny Bond again, because if you use Destiny Bond in succession, you know, it's like... It's going to fail, right? So go for Destiny Bonderson, hoping they take me out so I can take Escavalier. Escavalier is a very bulky Pokemon. Got a lot of offense, and man, this thing adds Spell Stinger. The funny thing, right, is um, I'm going to take the Escavalier up, not before it gets its boost in attack. That would have been really bad if I just went for another attacking move. That would have been super, super bad. So down goes the Escavalier there. I finally take out one Pokemon. Like, I've got like, they, they, I've got like a few Ice-type Pokemon, too. So bring in my best squad here. You can probably see the team synergy is quite difficult on the scene. There's a lot of weaknesses. So Berserker's going to come in here. Now, once again, I'm kind of walled. I was running a max attack and max speed set. We've got attack order, Destiny Bond, dual wing beat. It gets now and revenge. It actually gets Destiny Bond, which is really nice. I had two Destiny Bond users, which is kind of handy too. So if I came across a situation where I thought, well, I'm probably going to not be able to take this Pokemon out. It's a big counter. I just Destiny Bond. So going for that revenge there. Revenge does some pretty good damage. Almost uh, about three quarters damage there, Berserker. And then I was thinking if I go for maybe a Destiny Bond here or an attack order, I was very... I was like, Desi Bond's going to have to be the player. So I go for any of my other moves. We've got negative priority on my fighting type move. And the other moves, it's simply not going to take it up. So we're going to pay back here. It's like, oh, not pay back again. And it lives on one health. That's two Destiny Bond fails there on this Berserker. They were getting super lucky, especially that one. So now it's like, man, I can't use it again. Like, what, what, what can I do? I've got to go for an attack all this time. So I could have actually gone for two attack orders. And it would have just been enough to take it out. I thought they'd just go for a Gyra Ball and take me out. Like, I, I I don't even know. So we got another payback there. And down goes my best book. And man, this is rough. I'm, I'm, the, the luck is not with me at the moment. So I've lost um, almost all of my team. I've got this Slazzle left. And uh, obviously, um, Slazzle gets some pretty cool moves, actually. It gets a, uh, a nice... Uh, f it gets Fire Lash and it gets Dragon Hand. So I opted to go for a physical set. I used to run like a sub Leechy Berry set, but this one is far superior. And I thought I'd give it a cool go. Um, this set is Max Attack and Max Speed. I'm actually running Adamant Nature. I need a little bit more attack. And since it's got Dragon Ants already, one Dragon Ants already like really, really fast. So I'm going to hit there by the payback. It's a two-hit KO. And now I can go for a Fire Lash and take out the Berserker. That was my plan anyway. And then I was thinking if I simply just take it out. I won't put like a, you know, the sun on the field, but if I put the, um, Sun on the field, then the Fire Lash is going to be doing a lot of more damage, right? And you might have guessed the team. Yes, it is a Mono Steel type team, which is pretty rough against a lot of my team, but I had one Fire type Pokemon. Now, out of all of my team, Physical Salazzle was probably the best Pokemon I had, and that is saying something, right? So, it was a pretty, it was, it was difficult synergy, and I gave myself really challenging sets to use, so it was really hard team to, uh, you know, to do well with, right? So, go for that uh, max play there, and that's going to take out the Berserker. Obviously, I had a little bit of health left, and uh, now we're going to put that, um, Drought up on the field, or that sun up on the field, right? So it's going to be nice and good for a couple of turns. That's going to power up all my uh, fire type moves as well. Uh, the other moves I gave it were uh, the po I gave it poison jab and I gave it knock off as well. Uh, you probably would have seen that already there. So I can go for the uh, max moves for those two. Now I could, um, I could definitely take Corviknight out in one shot if it didn't Dynamax. I wasn't sure if it, uh, if it did, uh, or even if it G Max, right? So they're not going to G Max, and the Corviknight is going to go down. So that's really good. Getting rid of another bulky Pokemon there. So I've taken three Pokemon out pretty much. I mean, I, I mean, I haven't taken them all out with the, uh, you know, with uh, the Slazzle, but I've taken two out so far. That's more than any of the other Pokemon so far, right? So we've got Bronzong coming in. I'm thinking, do they have Heat Proof on this or do they have Levitate? I feel like that you could have Heat Proof on Bronzong on this type of team, but we'll see. So Bronzong is going to go down in one shot, and this Slazzle is popping off right now. So I've taken... We've actually evened the battle up right now with uh, the Slazzle, right? Unfortunately now, the uh, Dynamax is going to run out on Slazzle, and it's going to go back to having its... Uh, I mean, it's all right. It, it's it's not too bad. Now, I noticed that Mawile didn't actually have Intimidate, so I'm like, okay, it's got Sheer Force. Is this going to be a special set? Also, they haven't Dynamax yet either, which was kind of interesting. So I'm like, they're probably going to Dynamax them a while. Now, I've got the Sun up, right? I've got plus one in attack. And I've also got Fire Lash. Now, Fire Lash is a really cool attack, right? Um, what it does is, you know, it does its normal attack and it actually drops the fence of the uh, opponent by one stage, which is really, really nice. So you can keep attacking. Say if someone's stalling you out, you just keep attacking them 
and then keep it dropping the defense like well one stage which was like super super nice there so go for the fire lash almost takes for a while that was a really really big effort there um i think there if i would have got through them a while i definitely would have taken the rest of the team out with slazzle alone I, I i feel like slazzle pretty much took nearly every one of these Pokemon out. Like, pretty much. So, all I've got left is one other Pokemon. I wonder if you can guess what it is. Oh, wait. You, you got to see my... You got to see what my team was at the start of the, uh, the uh, video, didn't you? So, it was Galate. So, I thought I'd run this. Now, there's a couple other Pokemon that could have been in this team, like Nidoking and Nidoqueen, but obviously, we don't have them yet and stuff like that. So, unfortunately for me, my wallet is going to be living here. And I've got a Choice Specs Galate here. Now, Choice Specs... Well, Special Glade isn't really that great anyway. Its special attack is pretty bad. And it's got a shaky stab move with Focus Miss, right? So what I did right is I went for a T-Bolt here with the Choice Specs. I had to go for the T-Bolt right because they had one Pokemon left that was really good. Like, it was the best Pokemon on the team. Unfortunately, I couldn't meet it with my Slazzle. I was hoping it would come up against my Slazzle, but it didn't, right? So the Sun's gone. And the last Pokemon we got is, of course, the Aggistash. So I was like, okay, my only way to get around Aggistash, it's such a great Pokemon, is to get a Paralyze. And look at the... The tiny amount of damage there that the Choice Specs Thunderbolt does. So, uh, the Aggistash is going to go into its Blade form, and now it's going to go for a Shadow Claw. And that, my friends, is basically game it. I think I did the best I could possibly do. It, it felt to me like Slazzle was the only one. Like, I pretty much took their entire team out with Slazzle. But, uh, unfortunately, the bad luck at the start of the Destiny Bond sort of spelt doom. Ah, uh, for that battle. Let's get on to the second one. So, some not, some not very nice luck there at the start. So, I was hoping this would uh, maybe turn around in the second battle. Now, I was going to ask you people, do you like um, do you like having three battles or two battles? Like, I, I still feel this is a good length for a video. You guys get a lot of content. So, I don't know. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? Let me know in the comment section of the video. So, we've got a battle here. This one's against Skylar. We haven't had a battle for a hot minute. And we've got a Munchlax lead here. So, like, okay, well, Munchlax is very bulky of Everlight. Let's see how much these little bees do to it. Now, the little bees are going to probably be a three-hit KO, maybe four if I get really unlucky. And Munchlax's Ice Punch is a two-hit KO. So, I was at a really bad stage here where I'm thinking, I'm going to have to use Destiny Bond again on Vespigan uh, to take it out. This was really, really like, unfortunate because I didn't want to like get rid of my Vespigan like that like twice in a row. But I had to. I had no choice right. Plus, Munchlax could have something like Rest, you know, and that, which would be really, really bad. So, down goes my Vespigan, but uh, down goes the Munchlax at the same time. So, I an eye for an eye. And at least I had a hive for a hive then. And uh, we got a Gardevoir coming in this time. I didn't get to show you guys my Gardevoir set. I've used this one a couple of times. And it's not too bad. It's, it's a meme, but it's pretty fun to do. Unfortunately, Soul Rock is going to come in. I'm going to get Levitate on Gardevoir. Hacker Exposed. Now, what we're going to do here, right? We've got a Future Sight only set. So we're going to pop that Future Sight up, right? We've got Max Health, Max Special Attack, Modest Nature. So we're putting Future Sight up. Now, Future Sight, obviously, is a pretty powerful attack. We've got 120 base power. And it obviously hits after, you know, obviously, it's a time-delayed move. Now, what I want to do right with that is to boost the power of it with laser focus and protect off a couple of turns until the move hits. Unfortunately, Soul Rock is going to resist that, but I thought even Soul Rock should get hit very, very hard by a critical hit unless they're running some crazy bulk right. Now, this Soul Rock is obviously trying to boost its special attack with uh, Charge Beam. I'm thinking... I hope it's not running the item I know it's running at this stage. I, I wasn't sure, though, but I had a, a fair chance that it could work on. So, Charge Beam's going to do nothing. Gardevoir's got, like, a lot of special defense, too, and Soul Rock's probably mostly invested in special defense. So, as you can see there, the laser focus made it 100% crit the next turn, and that is definitely a Soul Fence. There's no way that, uh, that Soul Rock took it that well, right? So, go for another future strike. I estimated I needed three... Future sites to actually take this one out, and like I needed a crit as well, so I needed one more to crit, and then the other one would you know just take the soul rock out, right? Now, soul rock obviously was locked into a soul vest here, so it couldn't have any like healing type moves or anything like that. Now, I noticed it wasn't using stab at all, I was like, okay, it obviously doesn't have a like a rock type move. I'd say it probably had a psychic type. This is my thought process it was like, it's probably like charge beam to boost a special attack, and then you know, psychic type move, right? For stab. So I thought, okay, we can go for a laser focus here. So it was almost important that I stored out all the other turns. Now, the turn before focus, um, not focus energy, um, before the future site actually landed, I definitely went for that so I could get the 100% crit. So we're going to end up Fire Blast here. I can't say Fire Blast was this most strongest move here, um, like base power. And the second future site is going to fail to take out the Sol Rock, of course, even with the crit. 
So now all I gotta do right is pop one more future side up, and that's gonna be Sol Rock down. Now I've got rest on this set as well, which is gonna be kind of handy, and I've got the item as Chester Bro, so I can heal myself up and you know do it all again, right? Now the the funny thing is here, I'm not sure if you knew this, right? Say you get future side up, right? And then say you get laser focus up the turn before that. But say they fight you, unfortunately the 100% crit chance does not apply if your Pokemon faints. So, which is really, which kind of sucks. I mean, it makes sense, but it, 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 it kind of sucks at the same time. So now I can see that it's got Psychic. That's why it hasn't used any stab moves. And I went for Protect them. So now swapping out the Gardevoir and swapping into Glalie. Because I'm like, okay, well, I'll probably go for Psychic again, right? That'll be a good play. And then the Soul Rock went for a Fire Blast. I'm like, oh, man. And Fire Blast as well over my... Um, half health on my Glalie right now. It's a good thing I was running bulk on there, right? Because, you know, Glalie would have got nearly one shot. So down goes Solrock finally. That took so long. That's like half the battle taking the freaking Solrock out. And Glalie's going to get a sneaky defense boost with the Moody. And it's going to drop my speed. It's like, okay, that's kind of annoying. And what of Pokemon's going to come out here? And then I was out creamy. He's like, okay, well, I'll be able to outspeed this thing. Now, at this stage, I was like, I could go for Attract. Or I could just go straight up for the Sheer Cold. I was like, nah, let's get the Attract going. I might be able to even be able to heal myself up and then get a Sheer Cold up afterwards and maybe even block this El Cream in. So the El Cream of Vanilla Strawberry is going to come in here. It's got some little love hearts flying around it. And it's not going to get infatuated. And it's going to go for a Dazzling Gleam and take me out. I was like, okay. All right, that's an offensive set. Now I can see it's got Life Orbs. I'm like, okay. I'm thinking Max Special Attack, uh, Modest Nature with Life Orb, right? So into Gardevoir, um, I was like, okay, well... I've got the trace up. I've got that sweet bow. It's going to, you know, really change the battle. I can go for a future side here and drop that future side to do a fair bit of damage. Then I could swap someone in and maybe finish it off on a lower man health. So Gardevoir's got to go for the future side. And the good thing was there wasn't any Pokemon that could really swap into that, like, comfortably anymore. Like, not, like, super comfortably, right? It was going to do a lot of damage. So Gardevoir's going to go down to the Dazzling Gleam. And also going to take a little bit of help off with a Life Orb too. Now we're going to go to Frostlass. It's like, okay, well, Frostlass... I could go for Triple Axel. Triple Axel is a really cool move. It can hit three times. Um, has a chance of missing though, so it's got 90% actually every single time. But it gets exponentially, uh, you know, more powerful as it goes. So as you can see, it does a lot of damage. The last one doing heaps. Unfortunately for me, there, I'm not going to get the flinch. And Al Creamy is going to go for the dazzling gleam. That does a heap of damage. Doesn't take out uh, the uh, doesn't take out the frost has, but it actually takes it out with the life orb damage. Then I was like, this is really good, right? Because the next turn. The future site from the Gardevoir a couple of turns back is going to hit like really, really hard. So instead of going for a Destiny Bond, I was like, I'm going to go for Poltergeist, right? In case, uh, you know, Lapras goes for a status move, right? And doesn't, you know, take me up. So it's going to be a physical set. Going for the Liquidation, taking my Frostlet out. However, I hit it with the Poltergeist. And I can see it's got Choice Band too. And now it's going to get hit by the future site. Almost take it out, man. That future site drops hard. Now we're going to swap in the Slazzle. Now, Slazzle was the MVP uh, from the battle before. Even though I didn't win the battle, it did so much work, right? Now, I really cannot afford to set up in Lapras's face, right? No way. So I've just got to go for a Fire Lash and take out the Lapras, right? I'm going to need a drink right here. Mm. I've got to hydrate myself. So we've got four Pokemon down. We've still got two remaining, right? Now we've got Toxtricity. It's like, okay, this is going to probably be out a two-hit KO. Um, I believe I could probably leave one attack depending on what the set is. So I'm going to drop his defense. 100% chance, right? Now we got the overdrive here. I was like, maybe it's... Hopefully it's not choice specs. And it's not. That did, like, not enough damage to be choice specs. And now we got the G-Max Toxtricity. I'm like, okay, there's no way I'm going to be able to live this one. I actually need one crit to take it out. If not, you know, I'm not going to be able to take it out. Then I'll be down to my last Pokemon, right? which is my Special Glade. And I'll tell you what, Special Glade isn't anything to write home about, right? So we've got the G-Max uh, Toxtricity here. I'm just going to go for another Fire Lash. I could have gone for a Dragon Dance there, but I felt like two attacks was better than one. It's kind of a shame, though, if I had, like, a physical Glade, it could have made use of those defense drops, right? So we've got the G-Max Stun Shock here, and there's no way that Slazzle is going to be ever living this one in this uh, wide world, people. And uh, down goes Slazzle. Oh, the, the item was Air Balloon, if I didn't say that already. It could probably come up on the screen. Now, you could run that as a Lumberry if you felt you might get paralyzed or even a life ball for some extra damage but maybe try out maybe try out our physical slash I, I know it's a meme but actually had some good surprise about it with dragon ants and stuff like that so we're going to go into the dynamax glade this is my last hope to get back into this game i've got a gmax pokemon to deal with and one more so i was thinking right maybe i should get the psychic terrain up against this thing 
Now, I was running Timber Nature on this one with uh, Choice Specs too. And uh, that's going to be enough to take out the Toxtricity and outspeed it, which is really nice there too. And put the Psychic Terrain on the field. Now, the last Pokemon had me thinking a little bit whether I was going to be able to one-shot it. And depending on what the actual set was as well. So, I knew I'd be able to take that out. But the last Pokemon was reasonably bulky on the special side. Even if it was a sweeper, right? And Glade special attack is nothing great, right? So, Lilligan, I was thinking, okay... I'm going to go for a Thunderbolt with the Electric Terrain and stop Sleep Powder. But then the Lilligan's going to outspeed me and get a Quiver Dance up. So it's like, bugger, that really sucks. So it didn't go for Sleep Powder, it went for Quiver Dance instead. So I'm going to just go for a weak move there. I was hoping it would go for the Sleep Powder and then, you know, the... Um, I was hoping I'd outspeed and stop the Sleep Powder. But unfortunately, not, right? I could have gone for a Psychic type move there. It would have done really big damage. And, you know, it could have possibly taken it out. So go for the Max Mind Swap. As you can see, without the terrain and with that Quiver Dance up, it does not take it out. So I say it probably would have taken it out most definitely with a Max Mind Swap there. So that's how it is. There's nothing I can do there. Um, I've got my Glade going uh, really, really super small again. And it did have Magical Leaf, so it didn't have Giga Drain. So like, okay, what's it going to do? And then it's going to bust out a Hyper Beam. The thing about Lilligan, right, its special move pool is very barren, especially with taking away Hidden Power Fire, right? So we got the normal gem and high beam, and Glade is uh, definitely not going to be able to live that one. And that, my friends, is the game. I'd say I would have won the battle if I went for a psychic type move, but I thought they were they could run a bulky set and go for sleep powder. So that's the way it goes. I don't regret my decision. I still I, I still I still feel like sleep powder would have been going through their head to go for that if they had. And apparently, uh, you know, uh, she did have it. Okay, so the last uh, battle we got here. This one was against Art Pop Rain, and we got the third battle for today. So I was hoping if I can finally get a win with this dang team, right? It was a hard team to get a win with. Uh, I think it's mainly because of the synergy and the meme sets, but that was, that's not, you know, part of the challenge, right? So we got a uh, Steelix here. I'm going to go for a Triple Axel. I hit it once, and uh, I get a flinch, which is crazy there. So I'm able to go for another Triple Axel there, which is absolutely amazing. That's the first time I've got a flinch off Triple Axel on just one hit, right? So Stilix is going to go uh, be a special set. And I'm like, man, goodbye, Frostlass. So it's going to be a Power Herb. It's going to get a plus one and a special attack. And even off Stilix is really terrible um, special attack, that's going to definitely take me out. Frostlass is not bulky at all. Also, this team wasn't really bulky, like, really at all. Like, a lot of the Pokemon could get one shot, like, super, super easy, right? Like, you know, Slazzle... Frostlass. That, that's like a third of the team that weren't even like that bulky. So I went for Focus Miss, and guess what, guys? It's going to miss. Now we got Scorching Sands. There's like, all I need now is a burn. This would be really nice. And and, and, I, and I get burned. So that, that's really great. So now I can go for a Focus Miss and hopefully take out this, um, I nearly said Meteor Mash, Steel X said. Uh, and that's going to miss again. I got two misses in a row. Then it's going to go for Dragon Pulse this time. So Dragon Pulse probably does a little bit less than Scorching Sands. So maybe like one or two turns I can live if I land this and I do and that is the Stilix down man that was really bad because when you look at it right Stilix took out basically two Pokemon there like my Glade's almost done because of those misses man that sucks I mean focus it's focus miss right that that's that's what it is so Snorlax is going to come in here I smelt like a rat I was like maybe it's going to go and have like a weakness policy set or something like that. Or maybe they just think I'll miss. So that does a lot of damage to Snorlax. Not taking it out though, but doing a big chunk. And now Snorlax is going to be a special set with the Hyper Voice taking my Glade out. That sucked a lot. I'm getting, like all those focus misses was like, that was a lot of uh, misses there. And uh, cost me a lot of damage on this, especially on the Steelix, right? So anyway, that's how Pokemon is sometimes. And that's how focus misses. Let's go for the attack order with the Vesquin and take out this Snorlax, right? We got to get back into this game. So I'm actually, I'm actually very thankful that I landed the Focus Miss against the Snorlax. That was a really big one because Snorlax is, man, it, it's really bulky. So Magneton is going to slide in here. It's going to use Electric Trains. So I'm like, oh man, this is going to be able to take my best foot out with like a Thundershock right now. So I went for the Revenge. That's the best move I could actually do against it. I'm very walled by Steel right now. And it does very little. So I'm guessing it's obviously an Everlight, a Magneton Ride. So I knew that I'd be able to outspeed it and go for the Destiny Bod if they're running most of the... I'd say they're running like Max Health and Max Special Attack, right? With Rising Voltage and Electric Train. That is going to do huge amounts of damage and Vesper is going to go down. Wait, I just realized Vesper went down in every battle with Destiny Bond. Man, I, I just... I, I literally use this Destiny Bond fodder every time. It worked though, right? So now I'm going to swap in Glalie here, right? And they've got a Magnetone 
and the Magnazone. I was like, man, I know Rising Scum's coming away too. So I popped the Sheer Cold. It didn't have Sturdy and Magnazone. It's going to go down finally, Glalie. Man, Glalie came through right when I needed it. So that's uh, that's four Pokemon down, and we've got a little bit of a Moody boost here. So Moody's going to boost my speed, which is great. You know, that, that's really good. And it's going to drop my defense. It's like, okay, that's fine. But... When you look at it right, it wasn't. I, there was really no doubt on ever outspeed. You know the Goodra. Sheer Cold is gonna land again on the Goodra, and it's gonna take it out. Man, I'm having a field day with this right now. So I'm in a really comfortable position, right? I've got the Glalie, and I've got like a couple of Pokemon left after Glalie. But um, you know those couple of Pokemon. The last Pokemon was a really scary Pokemon too. So we got the Weavile here. It's so like okay, if this Weavile is like you know max attack, max speed, you know Ice will crash, knock off something like that, Ice shard. It's gonna be a pretty powerful set. Plus they haven't Dynamax yet too. So I'm completely walled. I can't infatuate. I can't sleep. I can't block, and I can't even Sheer Cold. That's the most walled you'd probably ever see in Pokemon. Like. People talk about getting walled. That was like hitting your head against a brick wall and then doing it again, right? And and then doing it again. So we got Dynamax Weavile here. I don't know what this is going to be. A special set, a physical set. I don't even know. If it's a physical set, I am going to be in a lot of trouble because this thing's really, really fast, right? It could have a Focus Sash as well. You know, there's no saying it couldn't have one of them too. So I went for Sheer Cult. Obviously, it's not going to work. And uh, now Weavile can just go for any moves. It's going to go for Max Start. Now. So like, okay, let's see how much this actually does. And during the damage, there's like, there has to be a physical set. It's got to be a physical set to do that damage to one shot my Glalie, right? Then, you know, I was thinking, we'll, we'll soon find out, right? So, going to go to Gardevoir here. Now, Gardevoir does have Protect, so I can go Protect on the first turn. And then, you know, maybe get it, like, get rid of that Dynamax, right? That was really, really important. So, we're going to trace that pressure. Not that it really matters at all. It's not going to matter because we're at the end of the battle. So, go for Protect. I was actually thinking about if I go for a double Protect here. But it's not really going to matter too much, right? Because the next turn, if I do live this, which I knew I would because I'm running really bulky, you know, uh, Dynamax would wear off. So we got some hail falling now. And Gardevoir cannot do anything yet. The problem is, Glalie was walled by Weevil. And Gardevoir is completely walled too. Like, so I had two useless Pokemon. So essentially, both these Pokemon were dead useless. If my Pokemon fainted after that, I really only had one Pokemon to use against the Glalie, right? Uh, the, not the Glalie, the Weavile. So I had to make sure I could take it out. So uh, my last Pokemon here, as you probably guess, is Slazzle. And I only pretty I pretty much only had four usable Pokemon in this battle when it came down to Weavile being the last one. So the Dynamax is going to wear it. I have not used my Dynamax yet, but I know I'm really going to need it, right? Because I need a little bit of extra Bolt. Now, Weavile is definitely going to be able to speed me. Easy. Like, I'm running Adam and Nature on this one, too. I cannot afford to Dragon Dance in front of it. There's no way, like, its physical Dark type moves will absolutely destroy me, right? So, uh, getting that a little bit of extra uh, buff and health there. I did actually remove my candies. Boo -hoo. I can go for a Fire type move and take it out in one shot. Unfortunately, then I seen the Endure. I'm like, okay. It's got Endure. It's going to live on one health. It's probably going to have weakness policy here. Yeah, it doesn't need like a, a Salic Berry or a Leechy Berry. It's going to be able to take me out like super, super easy um, if it does have a super effective move. Or like Night Slash or something like that. So it's going to have that uh, activation of the weakness policy. I've got one more move that can take it out. However, I need to live the next move here. And uh, it's got a plus two in attack. So that's a lot of boost. Slash was a bulky. And it's going to have freaking Psycho Cut. And Psycho Cut is going to creep me. Oh, I don't know about you people, but I'm sick of this tape. It was fun, but I just couldn't get a W with it. I got so many good battles. Like, there was another two or three battles that were 1-0. Like, all like these battles. Anyway, people, hope you enjoy this tape. That's the way it goes sometime, and I'll catch you tomorrow for another video. Peace out.